not because I am some terrible person with no heart, but because I'm a wonderful person <laughs> with a sensitive and big heart. Size of Texas, by the way. What the Today, I'm gonna tell y'all about the biggest piece of trash in the game. Doctor, I don't even wanna give him that. Christopher Dunch. Ugh. Ugh. Who let him in the hospital? Oh, look, he's drunk again. Corny ass. Just to give you a quick little summary, Christopher Dunch was a guy that wanted to be popular, respected, a little, definitely a little narcissistic, okay? So he decides that he wants to become a neurosurgeon. But Christopher Dunch does not want to put in the hours, and he does not. And somehow, he manages to get his medical degree after only putting in less than 100 hours when you were supposed to put in thousands of hours. Somehow he skated through the whole system. Well, now he's got his medical degree and he's got to get some clients. One of the first people he decided to operate on was his best friend, a sports player. Christopher Dunch pretended like he knew what he was doing and in reality, he didn't. He operated on this man's spine and when Chris's best friend woke up, he could no longer walk. That was the first person that he made. Christopher Dunch only worked for about two years. There are reports of several patients dying him working, operating on the wrong parts of the back or neck, leaving screws loose inside of people's bodies, severing just the wrong everything, nerves, joints, all of that. So many of his people were left unable to walk if they still even had their lives afterwards. He didn't give a shit. On top of that, he was coming into the hospital getting wasted every day. He would come in with dirty scrubs after doing cocaine all night and getting drunk. And then he would just come in and operate on people, smelling like shit. Okay, Th this man was a whole mess. So like I said, there's lots on the full case. Maybe if you guys are interested, we'll talk about it sometimes. But today, today, look, why am I telling you all this? Because y'all know I'm nosy. What do I like? I want to look at your Facebook. I want to look at your text messages. And I definitely want to look at Christopher Dunch's crazy emails that he sent, like, while he was on a bunch of cocaine and decided he was going to start killing people. Like, he wrote this in an email. I'm not kidding. It's out there. It's out there. It's a whole thing. Let's go through this crazy motherfucker's emails. So there's a whole lot in here. Basically, Christopher Dunch decided I'm a bad guy. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're a bad guy. I'm gonna email one of my coworkers. I don't know if they had a romantic relationship. I don't know if they were just friends, but apparently uh, Chris was real comfortable with Kimberly because he's saying some crazy shit in here. These emails are really what essentially put him away because it proved that it was intentional. All of the maimings on all of these innocent people were 100% intentional. I mean, look, he's on a bunch of cocaine. He is just going and going and going and going. But dude, you know what, actually? I'm about to read this whole thing and we'll pull out the best parts for you. Chris emails Kimberly and says, I hope you read this and understood this and it grabbed your heart in the right way. It would be impossible or at least a great deal of work to build this clinic without you. But everything else is either replaceable with a badass professional admin assistant or necessarily avoidable, including several other things that do not need to be mentioned. It is even easier and of course better to do the same with you deeply in love with me, rolling with me like my motherfucking soldier. Dude, who says that? Who fucking says, yo, no, 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 no. Imagine you're talking to a guy. Oh, and also he looks like this, okay? You're, you're talking to this dude and he says, I would rather be deeply in love with you while you're rolling around like my motherfucking soldier. <laughs> backspace, Chris, backspace, hit backspace. Oh my God. <laughs> Either get in, get out and just run a clinic and I will even let you on, off the hook on all the above if you protect my heart. But if you can't do that, then you can't do anything other than run the clinic in relation to me. Not because I am some terrible person with no heart, but because I'm a wonderful person <laughs> with a sensitive and big heart. Size of Texas, by the way. What the fuck? <laughs> I knew these emails were crazy. I knew it. I knew it. But like, this is page one. And most importantly, your words are beautiful, but I have a you tiny fraction of the significance you're, of your actions would, towards you me can, in so many do, ways for so many would, reasons with so many would, meanings and you, implications you attached to each so. one. I so desperately want to know what he's trying to say in his drug-filled brain right now. This reminds me of that one thing. Has anyone ever decided to want to know more, to want to do, do more, be more like? There are three ways to explain this to you. 
directly, bluntly, verbose, and kind. <laughs> Wait, he says directly, bluntly. Bitch, that's two. How are you in med school and you can't count? It, well, then I guess he said verbose and kind. Now it's four. Okay, verbose and kind with analogies and subtle yearning for empathy. If I can just get you to understand, whoop the shit out of your heart and put it in soul. Whoop the shit out your heart, mind, and soul. I can't. I can you try to say that? Try to say that sentence without laughing. Hold on. Hello, dude. Okay, wait. I'm recording this video right now, and I just, I just read the most ridiculous thing, and I just, I just need your opinion, okay? All right. I need you to imagine you're talking to this guy, and he texts you, and he like says his feelings for you. He finally says like, I really like you, and then he says, Allison. Allison, I want you to love me deeply and roll around with me like my motherfucking soldier. Turn off or turn on? That's... Is he gay? <laughs> He's talking to this lady, and then he says, I want to whoop the shit out your heart, mind, and soul. Turn on or turn off? It sounds like he's going to beat me up. <laughs> Okay. All right. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Not a Casanova. Okay. Thank you, Allison. Before you read the word before, your entire face was painfully grimacing in confusion. And that what the fuck are you talking about look that you give me around 47 times a day? Uh? <laughs> I'm going to choose bluntly. And if you still don't get it, then we can sit in a dark corner and I will explain in great detail some other time. I think I'm at a point where I don't even need to provide commentary on some of, some of these lines. If you don't get it, we can sit in a dark corner and figure it out. Why don't we just go to the cafeteria? Perhaps, I, I don't know, a room, a meeting room? Call me, FaceTime me. Why do we have to go to a dark corner? And if I'm looking at you like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about 47 times a day, it's probably because I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Unfortunately, you cannot understand that I'm really building an empire. I'm so far outside of the box that the earth is small and the sun is so bright. And I have around three minutes left to change my mind and go back. And of course, I always do. But that is something that you are probably, again, scrunching and confusion over yet. You know what I mean. <laughs> the funny thing is, you're alone reading, yet still scrunching. But for who? Yourself? Yeah! Because we don't know what the fuck you're talking about, Chris. Here's the deal. I have about six companies in play and about 80 people I have to talk to daily or weekly. I have three lawsuits. <laughs> I have 1 million in debt, 10 million invested, and 22 years of pain and misery already on the table. I have six chances at making enough of this and that to do what is next. I do not have the patience to put all my money on one horse. Anyone close to me thinks that I am likely something between God, Einstein, and the Antichrist. But because, okay, so this man's a narcissist. Can, Confirmed. Uh, because how I can do anything I want and cross every discipline boundary like it's a playground and never ever lose. But unfortunately, despite the fact I am winning, it is not happening fast enough. What is the problem, Kim? Is it simply that everyone else is human and there's nothing I can do about it? And so I pick and choose my humans and try to help them and show them, give them patience and kindness and never harm anyone unless they even think of doing the same to someone I love. He was just maiming people because he wasn't good at his job. Like he was just ruining people's fucking life and older people too. You know, one thing that he did was after he was discharged, he put together this whole marketing campaign. And the video is still online to this day where he essentially tries to say he was the greatest doctor in Plano, Texas. His Facebook page is even still up with all the reviews, the one star reviews. And he had no idea how to perform the surgeries he was promoting while operating on the most sensitive part of people's bodies, the spine. Can you imagine your 60 year old grandma going through incredible back pain for 10 years? Back pain is a miserable thing. And she finds a doctor that says, I can fix that for you. I can take care of that. And afterwards she can't walk anymore. This scares me, man, because it makes me think like, you know, if I go to the hospital or if I go to something for surgery, I, I would assume that my doctor beforehand isn't hungover. I would assume he didn't do cocaine all night. I would assume that, oh, his clothes are dirty because he's had a busy day, you know? 
It was terrifying that this man ever had a scalpel. You, my child, are the only one between me and the other side. I'm ready to leave the love and kindness and goodness and patience that I mix with everything else that I am and become a cold-blooded killer. That's, that was the line that put him the fuck away. I, I mean, never mind this whole, this whole thing is crazy. But this is the admission that all of his maimings and murders were intentional intentional the sad fact is that i would go faster and do better and catch more respect and honor by fucking everyone in the brain emotionally and mentally controlling them in a manner that borders on abuse taking no prisoners and sending everyone in my way especially that fucks with me to hell for the simple fact that they thought they could much less try so this guy is an incredibly insecure man that obviously has a whole lot of problems and the way that he overcomes them is by playing god while he's in the surgery room or at least that's what he thinks he does a bunch of cocaine and he's like i have access to these people's bodies I am God. That's what's going on in his brain. He he's a he's a textbook grandiose narcissist. Like truly, really. Like and honestly, I, I really don't throw out like sometimes I'll throw out a thing if it's staring you like straight in the face and people are gonna be like, Bose, you're not a therapist. You can't diagnose this man's a narcissist. He's a straight up fucking narcissist. I, I, you can see it too, okay? But here's the deal. At any given moment, you can never make up, much less know the pain and anger and frustration and genius and drive and destruction and architecture that I put on the table when it was time to do so. And all just before I showed up to wherever you were supposed to be. What is the point of all of this? You don't know Kim, and you don't know me, and you expend a lot of energy making simple complex, and complex things ridiculous. What the fuck is he? Okay, keep it simple. Never ever fucking argue with me and banter or what the fuck ever in front of anyone. When we are alone, my love for you will let you do... So, because that is your nature, but not in front of my lawyers and accountants and partners and employees and friends. Does it sound like to me that Kim doesn't like this guy? Like she's constantly looking at him like, what the fuck are you talking about? She's the one that turned over this email. She talks shit about him in front of, you know, I guess the lawyers and accountants and stuff like that. And he's just sitting here like, Kimberly, my bride, you mustn't do this. My motherfucking soldier. <laughs> That's like, wh I don't think this woman likes you, homie. There's a moment in time where you owned me and I looked you in the eyes, held you in my arms and said, I am so in love with you. But my God, I'm so in love with the way you treat me with respect and honor. Okay, it was definitely not loyalty considering I'm reading this email right now. Got you, fool. This is the simplest way I can tell you what I need from you. Everything you do is perfect, except when you are and are together in certain contexts. In some, you're a kitten purring in my lap. In others, you're wonderful and fun and fill my heart with joy. In others, you simply fuck me repeatedly <laughs> and not in any way that I would consider enjoyable. And I let you. What I'm being is what I am. One of a kind, a motherfucker, stone cold killer that can buy or own or steal or ruin or build whatever he wants. Hey, honey, breaking news. Anybody can do that. Anybody can do that. Anyone can destroy. Anyone can create. Anyone can kill. But we choose not to. We choose to be functional members of society that don't hurt others physically, mentally, hurt their children, their families. We choose not to. You are not God just because you've made this poor choice for yourself and the world. You're just not. You are my girl. I own you. That is my nature or you are not mine. I own what others think of you. If you don't get this, that is the same if you don't care. If you do, then walk softly and be very concerned. What? Not about your job. I will never let you go. But about my heart. How is he going to end this email? Like what? Like is it going to be like, well, okay, have a good night. Like we'll, we'll get there. Let me simplify things. Jedi mind fuck with your brain, not your breasts or sexual euphemisms. Okay, honestly, I wish he would have just ended the email right there. Like, that's just the closing. Like, Jedi mind fuck with your brain, Chris. Convince me that you really are or not desperately down for me and love me and want me because you all you really do is go back and forth or split the difference. So I'm always on the fence and never in or out, yet I want that so badly. But I sit here like a bitch and it's not a good use of my time. What, what is a good use of your time, Chris? Cocaine? Killing people, not reading the fucking material. I, I don't know, writing emails like this. Is this a good use of your time? I love you, babe. There is all, oh, here we go. We're getting to the end. I love you, babe. There is only one of you, but you are a double-edged sword and you can ride with me 
and that is entirely your call and you are making it every day if that is what you want just be clear with me my heart is so beat to death it barely works and you step all over it do not reply to this c what just happened dude his practice was called the minimally invasive spinal institute how gross is that so I just dug into this a little bit more just to give you guys a little more info. Basically, he and Kimberly really did have a little bit of a romantic relationship. Looks like they were always doing cocaine together. They did it the night before Jeremy Summers Paralysis, his best friend that I told you guys about in the beginning. So they have a little bit of a relationship and then after a while, she decides he's crazy and she doesn't want to be associated with him anymore. And she ends up being a key witness in this case and she turned over the email. He apparently sent this email on December 9th, 2011 at 4 a.m. 